Hello and welcome back to this, the second part in our tutorial series looking at light blockers in RenderMan Studio. Now, as you may recall from the first exercise, we got as far as this, which was looking at the light blocker and some filtering. Um, let's just explore again how we get to here. I'm going to put in an area light, a RenderMan area light, and I'm going to move it up and I'm going to scale it get reasonably large that'll actually do us for this example because I want to do something that's slightly different and I'll rotate it okay and let's move it up here and there we go okay so there's my area light what I'm going to do now is attach a light blocker by just right clicking and create light blocker so here we go here is the light blocker and let's scale this using the R in Maya and let's just do a re-render of this and see what it looks like. Okay, now I'd like to actually see the result of this more clearly. So I'm going to actually align these two just from the side slightly. Um, I'm going to align these so they're kind of lined up the same direction. That should make it easier that any kind of blocking will be more coherent. Let me go and re-render this. Okay, what I want to do now, I want to have a sharper shadow. To have a sharper shadow, I want to have a smaller light. Remembering that the reason why area lights produce um, nice blurred shadows is because they are actually area lights. Light is not coming from a single point. Mine is being a little bit stroppy on me. Let's just go and scale from here. Okay, so I'll scale that down and I'll move this all my shortcut keys are going a little bit uh, haywire. I'm going to increase the intensity here to say about four and try re-rendering. See what we get. Okay, this is kind of the result I'm looking for, which is a reasonably sharp shadow around the outside of the blocker. So the blocker is performing its task, but it's doing it very, very sharply. Selecting the blocker, we may not always want to have an extremely sharp area we may want it to actually blend more with the outside so of course people at RenderMan have thought of this and the blocker attributes have an edge softness at zero it gives the sharpest possible let's just try to 0.39 re-render it's becoming diffuse very very quickly and it's blurring out almost entirely now if I was even to move that up here and move it here We'll see. It is producing a diffused result here, okay, which is kind of useful because we can actually tune surfaces with the amount of light which we want to block from them. So rather than doing it on a per object basis, we can do it exactly where we want it. Okay, so that's a way of using the edge softness to actually give us a different result. Let's go back to the original edge softness and re-render. Now, the next thing under the blocker attributes here, which we're going to be interested in, is we can actually change from being blocker to being window. Let's see if this works. Sometimes it needs to be kicked off and re-rendered again. So let me just re-render it. Nothing is happening there. Now, that makes perfect sense that nothing would be happening because currently I'm trying to actually use it as a window, which is black. Let's change my color here to white and re-render. And we can see what's happened there. As opposed to this working now blocking light, which is passing through it, the only light which is being considered now is the light which is passing through it. So it's becoming a window. Now, for those of you who are familiar with um, V-Ray or with Mental Ray, this is not quite the same implementation of a sky portal, but that is something which is being looked at in RenderMan Pro Server 18. This is still something which is quite useful to us. Okay, so this is actually using it as a window. The only light which is going to be hitting our scene from this is coming through this window. And again, we can change the edge softness in this and re render. And we can produce really nice focused lighting results for it. Okay. 
Now, one of the things which we can do with a light window, which is quite interesting, is we can actually apply a texture map to it. We can't apply a texture map to a, um, to a blocker in the blocking mode, but in the window mode we can. So let me just see if I can find a texture. I did have some around before. Let me go to source images and see what I've got. Now I'll need to go to all images, all files. Do I have anything there? Okay, that'll actually do. Um, something to be aware of. The texture map here. Texture map won't actually work with a PNG or with a TIFF or anything else. What we need to do is we need to actually create a TX make, which is converting it to a random man texture. So I had to right click there and TX make. And now I'll go to input file. And let me just see where. Let's skip to a different directory. So let me go to my computer D. Um, where shall I go to? Random one project. Apologies for this. Looking around. Um, volumetrics. That'll probably do me. And source images. Okay, I've got a stained glass window in here. Okay, so that is now going to create a texture based on that. I hope. I most sincerely hope. Let's have a look. If I now go and re-render we can see that it is actually getting some color through there. I want to change my edge softness all the way down because I don't want any edge softness there. Um, let me see what else I want to do. I want to clamp and I want to resize up and re-render. Getting more of the effect here now. If I was to make this light smaller, so this light smaller, and I'll make it stronger, so let's say make this 10, and re-render, we're starting to get the effect of the stained glass window coming through this. The reason why we need to make the light smaller is because otherwise, again, as with shadows, um, the rays coming from this will tend to become, become confused as they pass through the stained light window, stained glass window. Let's make it smaller still and re-render and increase the intensity to, say, 13. So there we are. We're getting closer and closer and closer to the effect of a stained glass window, which we are looking for. Now, one of the limitations which I have noticed with this particular implementa implementation of um, light blockers in Random Man Studio 4 is that in blocker mode you can have multiple blockers for a single light, but having multiple windows for a single light doesn't seem to work. Um, let me just see if I can show you this working now. So let me go to the light blocker. There's the area light. Okay, so we have a single um, light in there at the moment. It seems to say, yes, I can put in another one. So if I put in another uh, blocker shape, and I even change this blocker shape to, let me just go this blocker shape. Oh, hang on a second, one moment. Let me just break that connection. I can delete that, right click on this and create a blocker. So I've got blocker two, that's what I need. Sorry, I, I was using the same, the initial blocker. Um, so let me just rescale this and set it as a window. Okay, let's see what happens now. Nothing renders. It only works a single window in this particular version, but I believe this is something which is being looked at. Um, even if I was to get rid of this now, sometimes it won't actually go back. Let me just see if it does. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't re-render. It does come back. Okay, so currently it works with a single window for a single light. 
Let's leave things here again for the moment and come back with some more light blockers in the next tutorial.